What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Sound of Tech once again, and welcome to the vlog for the custom PC that we have yet to codename. I think we're going to go with Codename McLaren. Let's just go with that. I know I'm not going crazy into any case modding, so, you know, forgive me for that, but what we're going to be doing is essentially putting together an entire custom open loop and going through some of the basics of, you know, testing the equipment and then actually test fitting and so on and so forth. But today's going to be the first vlog for it, and it's going to be covering the D-Lid of the 8700K, so stick around. Alrighty, so we started everything off by getting all of the parts together. All of them will be in the description below. We have the ASRock Z370 Extreme 4 motherboard, which is going to have 10 power phases, and we have a full review of it up here. The case is already also covered in a full review, which is the Corsair Obsidian 500D, and then we're going to be powering it with the focus uh, power supply from Seasonic. It's a great option if you guys want to go check that out. We have the 8700K at the heart of it with some G skill memory. We got 32 gigs of it. We did go with four DIMMs primarily for looks. And then of course we have the Titan X uh, Pascal in here. And it's all running and we currently are running IDA64 to go ahead and test, you know, the D-Lid, make sure that everything's looking good. And we're going to talk about that. So as far as D-Lidding goes, it's pretty simple on the Coffee Lake processors. Of course, I did fail on the Ryzen 2400G. You can check out that video once again up in the corner. And I'll be sure to link it because essentially it has a whole bunch of caps really close to the silicone and I popped them off. Now, there are tools, the Rocket 88 tool is the one that I use particular in particular for the Intel processors it goes all the way back to like the 2000 series which were soldered so you know don't do that I have but you know that's beside the point so we went ahead and used the tool it's pretty simple you're just gonna place it in there put the top on and then use an Allen wrench to tighten tighten it until you hear a pop I have full D-Lid instructions on the 6700k and the 7700k so you guys can check that out in the corner, of course, and I'm not going to go into too much of the detail here, but the next step once you get it delitted is to go ahead and I use scotch tape and tape around the die and then try to match it up as best as I can to the IHS. And then we go ahead and place a thin layer of the Coolibratory uh, liquid metal on both the die and then on the IHS. Now I was running a little low on it and you can actually tell uh, by the temperatures that I'm running that a couple of the cores are running a little bit hotter so we actually reordered and we did order some Conductuanot from Thermal Grizzly and I'll leave a link to that of course in the description below as well in case you guys are interested in doing this yourself. And we're going to have to reapply, I think, at this point. But it was successful. The system's running and it's pretty stable. A couple of things that we did notice right off the bat is the turbo is staying stably instead of bouncing around all over the place. And these are all stock uh, speeds and stock temperatures. So unfortunately, I didn't actually do enough testing uh, prior to delating it because at this time, I'm just kind of under the gun to actually get the project done. And so I really wish I would have run, you know, without the thermal throttling enabled by, of course, the BIOS, which is enabled. Like I said, everything is stock. So the temperatures actually look about the same where you start seeing the differences uh, from stock, you know, pre D lid to stock post D lid is primarily in the amount of throttling that's going on. We've been sticking here right at uh, all core turbo boost of about 4300 with FPU enabled on IDA64 as opposed to before we would start dropping quite lower than that. So we did get improvement of course and that's a good thing but unfortunately like I said the temperatures look the same. Now we're going to be essentially taking this and liquid cooling it or for an open loop so the, the cooler is also a very loud 80 millimeter fan on a uh, T2. So you can, if you wanted to, of course, run with a cheap cooler like this and then with the D-Lid, you know, I wouldn't even go above stock at this point. But the other thing I noticed is this motherboard is putting about 1.39 volts to the processor and that's just with stock uh, enabled period. And I think that's a little bit high uh, to be doing, especially at stock. I think once we get the water block on there and everything, we'll probably at best push to 1.45. That's where I'm going to want to be. 
And like I said, this is kind of like a vlog, so if you guys have uh, opinions or options, definitely leave them in the comment section below. But the project's off to a great start. All of the parts are working. Uh, we didn't have any RMAs that we're going to have to go through, so I'm ready to go ahead and start test fitting it. We're going to get the motherboard into the case and then get the radiators mounted and get the pump mounted. And then we're just essentially going to take a picture of it and we're going to draw out the lines of where we want to do the runs for the actual tubing. Now this is the first time I'm going to be using 16 uh, outer diameter tubing. So I'm going to probably be having a little bit of issue getting used to bending much larger tubing. I'm usually using the 12 uh, size and then 10 inner diameter. So I'm going to have to go through that process and you guys can join, join me to go through that of course and then we're just going to be putting the open loop on the cpu itself and then on the gpu we should have those blocks coming in T stay tuned for another what's in the box on that this project's probably going to be uh the main focus of the channel for at least the next couple weeks and then we'll be moving back into some other projects and we also have you know for the mining guys we have btcp pool that we're getting ready to set up so definitely check in with that i should have a video out this week sometime for that and a whole bunch of other review videos hope you guys enjoyed this video be sure to like comment and subscribe down below and i will see you next tuesday